We're all here and you're watching this programme because bike racing is a spectacular sport. But the beauty of the simple bicycle, this wonderful simple machine, is it's so much more than a collection of sprockets and wheels and gears for people to go fast on and entertain us. Now it is of course all of those things, but it has the potential to change entire communities. And here in Utrecht, well they've let it do just that. There's a general assumption around the world that the Netherlands' bicycle-centric approach towards the use of public space has always been in place, organically grown since the invention of the wheel. In fact, it hasn't. In the late 50s, the Netherlands, like the rest of Europe, was embracing the motor car, even demolishing buildings and removing cycling infrastructure to make the streets bigger to accommodate more motor traffic. The results were predictable. A rapid decline in the use of bikes and an increase in road deaths. By 1971, well over 3,000 people were dying every year on Dutch roads, and more than 400 of that number were children. The toll was seen as intolerable and sparked mass demonstrations, with protesters demanding central government take action to make the streets safer. In 73, an economic pressure in the guise of a predicted oil crisis gave the Dutch government the final push it needed to rethink not only the transport policy, but how they lived in the Netherlands. Car-free Sundays, ostensibly to save fuel, were introduced in cities and reminded people of just what they'd lost. And instead of being bad for business, as many shop owners had feared, takings actually went up. Eventually, city centres started to become permanently car-free, with Utrecht being an early adopter, and in the mid-70s, the first separated cycleways were built. Within a year, bike use in these areas increased by as much as 75% results that gave the government the confidence to take the scheme nationwide. Unsurprisingly, road deaths plummeted and the child death rate that had catalyzed the whole rethink dropped steadily from over 400 in 1971 to just 14 by 2010. For 40 years, the Netherlands built on their success, adopting and expanding their people-first philosophy, not only in their streetscapes, but also in their legislation. The presumed liability law, which presupposes that the larger vehicle is always responsible in the event of an accident, ensures every road user is obliged to look after the more vulnerable. In addition, all motorised traffic in the Netherlands has to give way when turning left or right to people on bicycles. It's a sad fact that cycling in Britain is still often seen as frivolous, a leisure activity that gets in the way of the serious adult business of driving. So calls by cycling protesters to adopt similar measures to protect and encourage cycling in the UK have been met with scorn, derision and in some cases outright hostility, with a vociferous few insisting that following suit would be unfair to drivers and in any case it would bring our cities to a standstill. Well, in Utrecht, just 225 miles away from our capital, they take a very different view. Their strategy hasn't led to chaos. In fact, there's virtually no conflict between drivers and bikes. The people here seem to like the arrangement they've developed, and why wouldn't they? The city is noticeably quieter, the air is cleaner, and businesses are booming. Public spaces here are simply a more pleasant place to be. You wouldn't prefer the roads where they live to look like this. 33% of all journeys here are by bike and, even more wonderful in an age where obesity threatens to kill more people than cancer, 50% of all the children travel to school by bike. And for those of us who've become accustomed to thinking of cycling as an inherently dangerous way to get about, there's an even more interesting stat. Less than 1% of cyclists in the Netherlands wear helmets, yet the country has the lowest incidence of head injuries in the world. The Dutch recognised early on that measures that really keep cyclists safe are space, low speeds, supportive laws and familiarity with riding at an early age. In my opinion, the people who make the big transport spending decisions on our behalf should be obliged to come and spend just a few days here before deciding what is and what isn't good value for public money. Well, I've spent a couple of days now riding around the streets of Utrecht and I've seen tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of bikes, but I haven't seen a single cyclist. I've just seen normal people in normal clothes doing normal things, dressed for their destination, not the journey. The bicycle, just a simple, fun and inexpensive way to get from A to B. It's a contraption that quite literally has the potential to change the world, if we let it. <laughs> 